Salutations readers, welcome to or welcome back to the Sort of Go Writer channel. My name is Nketi, and for today, I'm pretty much just gonna do just a reading review of 2023. So in this video, I'll be talking about stats, some goals to see if I've achieved them or not from 2023, TBR, just to have just, we just really need to go down and like, okay, what was I doing in 2023 reading wise? So. Yeah, that's what this video is gonna be about. So let's just honestly just get right into it. So I read 112 books last year. Now on Storygraph, it will show as 110 because two of the books I read was not able, I was not able to add them into Storygraph. So which is fine. It's still pretty accurate as far as everything else anyways. This is actually the first time I've ever read more than 100 books in a year. And my lifelong goal was to read 100 books in a year. So I'm actually really happy and proud of myself that I made it to way past 100 books honestly now not to say that if you don't read that many books you're not a real reader we're not doing that here okay now as far as pages read 19,820 pages so that's physically or digital pages which is really good that I differentiate for that because for hours listen I have 677.4 hours which I think if you calculate to know how many days that is, I think it's around 28, 29 days yeah I really like the fact that on Storygraph I can differentiate between the two and I can easily see those numbers And then now for moods, which I really love Starcraft for doing. So far as moods, I have adventurous, emotional, mysterious, dark, and reflective as my top five. And I have a bunch of other ones. I think this definitely makes sense because I am a highly, I'm a big fantasy reader. So a lot of the books I read are adventurous as far as the mood. And sometimes on subject matter, it can be pretty dark or mysterious. And then sometimes when I'm on, when I'm reading other genres, it can be a little bit more on the emotional side. And then let's get into genres. Now I will try to show y'all the graph here, which is gonna be a hard because I read varying genres that are overlapped. So I don't think you can see all of them, but as far as top five, I mean, fantasy clear winner. And then like queer is like the clear runner up here. And then we have literary and young adult. I don't really like the fact that young adult is considered as a genre here. It's more of an age category, but I get it. But it did tie though with literary fiction, which is, surprising for me honestly I didn't think I would read that much that much literary fiction and then in fourth place we have sci-fi which is a lot higher but I think it makes sense because I've been reading a lot of books that are sci-fi fantasy or sci-fi thriller or something and then we have horror and contemporary fiction that ties for fifth place and then we have you know I think mysteries and romance and short stories they're a lot higher than the previous than like 2022 and also manga is a lot less this year which I think just makes a whole lot of sense because I didn't really read that much manga. I've only been reading just like Fullmetal Alchemist and a little bit of Spy Family. I haven't read any much actual new manga and I do see myself reading a lot less manga in 2024. And then as far as the average reading, it's a 4.03 stars, which is really, really good. It's a little bit lower than 2022, but I think it just makes sense because I, well, I read a lot more books, so I found a lot more three star, maybe some two star books than I did in 2022, which is still fine because I still enjoyed I still thoroughly enjoyed most books that I've read last year, and I'm very, very happy about that. And then just a couple other random stats here. As far as number of 2023 releases I've read, I've only read 32. So that means 80 books that I read last year were backlisted titles. So like 2022 and further on. And then as far as series, or at least series that I've completed, I've only completed three. So that'd be the Secret Shanghai slash Foul Lady Fortune duet. And then I finished reading Football Alchemist, which I'm very proud of that myself for that. It was definitely a reading goal for myself. And then I read the Radiant Emperor duology, which I'm so glad that I've also read and finished and that I have on my shelf. And yeah, I think that's it really for stats. So let's actually go over my reading goals that I put in my, I think 2022 reflection, 2023 goals something video. Now, as far as the goals itself, so I think one of my goals was to read 75 books, which was easy. I've surpassed 75 books. I already said that. Rereading books and annotating. I didn't, I mean, I did reread books. I reread two books, but I didn't read read as much as I really wanted to. But maybe that's just still, I should still count it that I fulfilled it because I did reread books. But I did also annotate less a little bit. I don't know. Well, did I annotate less? Wait a minute, no, that's not true. I annotated in my yellow face reading vlog, but then I stopped annotating at some point, but I still annotate. I'm still counting that. And then I did annotate Fell Hard Huntsman, and I did annotate The Spirit Cross the Water. So you know what? Never mind. I actually am going to count that I fulfilled that goal. So honestly, 
props to myself for actually fulfilling that goal, actually. And then one of my other goals was to read more novellas, graphic novels, nonfiction, and poetry. I did read more novellas, so that part's true. Graphic novels, not so much. So that's not accurate. Nonfiction, also not so much. I think I read just about just as much of nonfiction that I did from 2022. Poetry, I think I've only read one and I saw DNF another one, so that one was a fail. And then to read at least 10 anticipated releases, like I said, I read 23, so that's already fulfilled. And then read one, at least one classic a month. Yeah, that part definitely fell off in like the first three months of the year. Like I started off strong. With reading, with reading, I think Carmilla in January, then I read Sula and Giovanni's Room in February, but then March and onwards, I didn't touch another. I mean, I tried to read like Frankenstein, but that was literally it. So yeah, that was, that, that goal fell off really, really quickly. And then as far as reading challenges, I participated in Blackathon, I participated in Asian Readathon and the Full Moon Readathon. And I think belatedly I put in that I want to participate in Buzzwordathon, but I still completed that as well. But one thing though I definitely did not fulfill in was a 12 Rex by 12 Friends. That one was definitely a miss. So yeah, I tempted, but it wasn't. It, it, ugh. Then next up we have the, my series TBR that I think I briefly mentioned in that video. And I DNF'd I think four of the series I put in there. So I DNF'd the Broken Earth Trilogy because I finished, I've only read the first two books. I DNF the third book, so yeah. I also DNF the Last Binding trilogy. I DNF the sequel, the second book, which is was a, a Restless Truth. I DNF the Celestial Kingdom duology. Y'all already know I did not like the Donna Moon Goddess, so what was the point of reading the sequel? And then I DNF the Monk and Robot duology. At least I think it's a duology. There's only two novellas in that series, and I haven't heard there'll be a third, so I think that's a strictly dual, a strict duology. Because I DNF the first book, so yeah yeah so you know i've done that four series on that tbr but then i've completed well i either completed or i've caught up in the series that i wanted to read so football alchemist like i said already read that the lock tomb series i've read and caught up to i've also read the raven fisher and system mystery series by almost pari i've read every single one of installments it's not a completed series but at least i got that anything else on that list it was like i'm not gonna bother and i do wish though i did read the dandelion dynasty because it was on my tbr and i did not i did not no attempt was even made so then like Dynasty now that's now into my 2024 series tbr sherlock holmes was also on that tbr now it's in 2024 the evil trilogy it was in 2023 now we're in 2024 and also a reading reading the green bone saga now 2024 as far as my cb my series tbr attempt was made but it was also kind of a shit show in regards to the ones i finished which ones i dnf'd and which ones i did not get to so now i'll talk about more like my reading habits that I really want to keep, I wanted to keep an eye on, but for the most part, it did not go the way that I thought it would. So first up, I wanted to keep track of like my book buying spending habits, but I think I dropped that like halfway through the year. But I definitely, I will just say without putting any numbers that I definitely spent a lot of money on books, but I also wish though that I did keep track of how much money I was at least saving from using the, my library whether it's that audiobook or a physical book because that's actually another thing too that actually was different from 2022 to 2023 is that i use my library by actually borrowing physical books because in 2022 i've only just borrowed audiobooks from libby i didn't actually go to my local branch to pick up a physical library book 2023 that changed that i started borrowing books physically and then also for as far as ratings though i really wanted to use the call pile method that's created by g from book roast but I definitely failed that in the middle of January. I'm still starting to use that now since I've started a couple books already. But I don't know how long I'm going to be using that method. We'll, I'll have to wait and see how long before I drop that too. But I do want to use the cop up method because I think it's a very... I think that's a very interesting way of rating books and also keeping track of other things as well that I can't do on Storygraph. But also though, a thing that I really appreciate from 2023 though is that I started using a reading journal. So I do use an Archer and Olive journal. This is like the square, so it's eight, eight inches by eight inches. I actually really like the idea of having just a physical journal where whether it's thoughts or I'm just trying to do something really pretty 
with like a TBR or for a readathon or I'm doing a reading vlog or something or what have you or a TBR that I have it all in here. I even do have sprites in here, but I'm not going to show y'all because it's kind of a lot, honestly, and it's not fully finished since I'm missing certain things, but which is fine. But it really is just really fun, honestly, of having just a journal where I can put in my thoughts in here. And it is mostly fully as well. I do have some space for 2024. And I do, and I have ordered a new journal for the remainder of this year because I know for sure I'm going to fill this up sometime in the middle of the year. Let's see, what other reading habits? Oh, see, yeah, like I said, I started borrowing more. I started finally borrowing physical books from my library. So that's definitely a plus that's going to be staying in for 2024. And then I'm also, I also started, as far as like book buying wise, I've also started using Pango now. I'm not like to sell or any books, even though I do, I do typically on haul books. I'm not going to get into it, but I do like going on Pango to buy certain books, whether, especially for cheap. And it's really like practically new. Like there are plenty of books that I, there's a, several books I have bought in the past year that I have on my shelf that I'm just like, I'm so glad that I got it used. Whether I loved it or it's something I've already read but I wanted my own copy of, which is definitely the best way to go for sure. And you know, I just really like it. It's like pretty quick shipping. So if you have not used Pango Books to like, if you wanna buy a book but cheap and hopefully it's on there for a really reasonable price, then I definitely check out Pango. Not every book that you want is gonna be on Pango. I've definitely learned that too, but it's just a really good starting place if you do want to buy, purchase a copy of a book, even if it's a new release, you know, just wait like maybe like a month or two after the book has came out and then you'll see some pretty cheap prices of that book. So yeah, as far as reading habits, I think that's it that I've, that I can actually remember keeping track of for sure. But I definitely want to be a lot more intentional on keeping track of certain my of my certain habits for sure. So that's going to change in 2024. But yeah, I think that's it. I think that's really all I had to really talk about as far as 2023. My reading year was a very, it's a very experimental year in regards to content and the books I was reading and exploring. As far as my reading taste, I explored different genres. I've read more different genres. I definitely read different kind of books from varying authors. And it was just really, really cool actually to see how certain books work for me and the ones that even didn't work for me, which I actually think is really important to know that despite my very, a pretty high average rating of over a hundred books, I am glad that I found books that I did not like. I think it's very important to balance out the things you like and you don't like so that you know for the ones you don't like, you can easily avoid them or you can just simply DNF them. You know, even if the ones that I did end up actually getting through, which I'm like, why the hell did I not DNF these books? You know, mistakes were made, but I'm glad that I made those mistakes so that I know what to avoid in 2024. And you know, 2024 has some new stuff, some new books in store for me as far as 2024 releases. I mean, there's a lot more books I'm really am interested in up front now that I'm like, okay, I really, really want to read them. So I probably would maybe read more 2024 releases this year than I did the previous year. And then maybe that means I'll find a lot more mediocre dud books. We shall see. Okay, everything's up in the air. We, I, I have to let y'all know about that a little bit later. But anyways, that is it. That's all I have for y'all. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you want to. Comment down below on any reflections of for yourselves in regarding 2023 as far as your reading year. Not means not just best or worst books, but maybe just like the quality of books you've read. Maybe the kind of reading habits you've picked up. Maybe ones you want to have, you want to bring into the new year. And if you made it this far into the video, but you're not really sure what to say, you just want to leave an emoji, leave me some sort of a graph emoji of any kind, whether it's a line graph or a bar graph, whichever one. Anyways, I hope you have a really good rest of your day, wherever you're watching this. And I do hope that 2024 treats you really well early on. And if it doesn't, I'm hoping that it does get better with for y'all later on in the month and for the rest of the year as well. And I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye.